everybody. All right, today I'm excited to be here to share and talk about the Amazon purchases that I made this year, going through my Amazon purchase history and looking at what was useful. What did I do right? What did I do wrong? That kind of thing. Overall, the things that I did really long, really wrong, I'm not uh, I'm not even bringing those up because I just feel like that's a waste of everybody's time. I know I know that it was wrong. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I, know, I know it was wrong. <laughs> Bad Noah. Uh, but, uh, overall just looking at, you so said, what was a good value? What wasn't such a good value? And, uh, I'm, I know there's some items in here that any, anybody that's in music, it'll be very useful to you to see these. It'll save you some money. Um, and then also some of these things will, I think just be interesting to think about from the standpoint of a musician, how maybe certain items that you wouldn't think of as music items actually are useful um, for a, a musician. So um, without any further ado, let's get into it. And we are going to look at this. I want to make sure that uh, it's coming through nice. All right. So... Well, we're starting with the Noah and the Space Ark book. That's fine. We can start with the Noah and the Space Ark book. Let me make sure the view is good. All right. So it looks good. All right. So Noah and the Space Ark book. Why did it go like that? Ah, there we go. All right. So that's actually the last one that I have on, on this list. But uh, we can start with the last one and then we'll jump to the forward. So the Noah and the Space Ark book. This may not be useful to, to y'all at all, but I'll use it as an opportunity to promote my band. I've got a band. We're called Noah and the Space Ark. And there was a book written called Noah and the Space Ark, which we found out when we came up with a name. We promised we didn't steal the name from you, Laura Cecil and Emma Ch Chester Clark. By the way, if anybody knows these people or knows how to get in contact with them, we'd love to touch base with them because uh, as far as we know, we're the only other... Uh, entity that's called Noah and the Space Ark, and it was just kind of cool to connect with them. So I, I bought one of their books, uh, and we take it. This is one this is one of my favorite purchases that happened this year. Um, it's something I like to do. Maybe for other musicians out there, you guys can, can do the same thing. Bands, if you find some kind of uh, simple book, maybe, maybe even a children's book that you think can... Um, it has has relation or relativity. What's the correct word there? <clears throat> That's connected in, in some way to the theme of your band. This makes for a great uh, band, like uh, audience signing. I, I don't know what the correct terminology is there, but basically, I've done this with a couple books, an album release show that I did one time, but. With the band, we found the perfect book, and basically people just, we, we always bring the book, and we always bring some markers, and people can come sign whatever they want to sign in the book. I think this is awesome because it, it's a free or very cheap way to facilitate engagement with your audience, and also just a keepsake and memory for yourself. It's it's a wonderful way to get feedback from your audience, different commentary, how they've experienced your music, things that made them feel, what they wanted to express to you in your book. I think it's it's a really fun, cool thing to do. Um, so I love it. This is one of my favorite uh, purchases of the year, the Know It in the Space Art book. You get all these comments from all these different performances that you do that you get to see um, interactions or f uh, feedback or words of affirmation that you would never have received or seen or known um, if you didn't do it, if you didn't do this. So I think it's really cool. Highly, highly recommended. All right, let's jump into this. We've got... Uh, Audio GL, GLS Audio 50 foot mic cable cords. Now, actually, I bought the 25 feet, but I had it I had it put on the 50 feet because this is an insane value, insane value. So I needed some more mic cables for my studio, and I needed essentially 25 foot. I thought would be a good size um, or good length, and. As some of you may know who buy mic cables, mic cables can be stupid expensive, uh, you know, more than a dollar per foot. And uh, I used to buy mic cable before I had any sense. I would buy these cables in, you know, the guitar center 
or something like that. And I'm thankful. People talk junk about Guitar Center or Amazon or Walmart or some of these big businesses. I'm thankful for these things. They employ a lot of people. I don't know exactly necessarily what they do from the top down, how greedy they are at the top, but man, they make things uh, more affordable. Um, and so I, I, I don't look at them as just like these pure bad entities. I think they're pretty useful. Amazon's pretty incredible. So that you can, so about these, about six 25 foot mic cables that are color coded, which is kind of cool in the right, uh, for the right purpose, which in my studio, it's perfect for that. And I got them for 30 bucks. The price has gone up $5, uh, since the last few days, I guess there's a Black Friday sale. But then I went over and clicked on the 50-foot, and this is insane, six-pack, a six-pack of 50-foot mic cables for 20 bucks. I mean, I'm almost tempted just to buy these so I can sell them, you know, <laughs> or like that I just have a bunch of extra ones that one day when I don't need them anymore, they're going to be worth more than 20 bucks. I mean, that's insane. So anybody need 50 foot mic cables there you go that's uh a remarkable value and uh and then we can click over on the 100 foot 40 bucks for six six 100 foot mic cables so i've received these already i bought two orders of the 25 foot i almost wish i clicked on the 50 foot cuz why not um i mean that's just I don't know what to say other than I, I I don't understand how that's possible. So anybody that sees this, you might just want to buy it, <laughs> even if you're not in music. I don't know. All right, let's move to the next one. All right, so we got some batteries. These are you unique batteries or LR44. <clears throat> I need them for my guitar pickup for my acoustic guitar, and just if uh, if you have any pickups that need these particular kind of batteries or you need these kind of batteries. These worked out for me. By the way, I, I did want to say on those cables that I just talked about, I've received them. I think they're good quality. They're maybe they're not the best quality that you can, you know, best quality for you for your money, but uh, they seem like they're going to be totally fine. They're they're better quality than other mic cables I've had, and I think they're going to last. Uh, they're going to be fine. So yeah, some batteries. If you need these kind of batteries, this was a good purchase. Save some money. They're cheap. They work. All right. The professional guitar winder cutter. I just uh, I, I decided to include this because uh, for the longest time I've been using like pliers or or sort of different like uh, like wire cutters to do this function on the guitar. And when I, I I got one of these on sort of by happenstance through a different purchase that just had it included. And since then, getting used, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, this looks like it sucks, but you, you use it, and actually, it's really effective. So if you've ever looked at one of these and thought, ah, eh, that doesn't look like it actually be that great, looks cheap, uh, like it might break, like it might not cut very well, cuts perfectly, I don't really understand the physics of exactly why it works as well as it does. It doesn't really make sense to me, because the the blades are not sharp. It's kind of a flat surface, but it works great. So, and then you've got one little tool. So I bought a couple of them just so that I make sure I've got them in different spots so I don't lose them or forget them. Or if I lose one or I forget one, I still got another, something like that. So, all right, moving on to the next one. This one might not be for everybody, but the Ricoh Theta Z1 uh, cam a 360 camera. This was a tough one for me to make because it's a big chunk of change. Uh, not a cheap purchase. And I'm, I'm still kind of on the fence if the value is, is right. But, you know, one of the things about doing music um, is, is trying to promote it. And I'm trying to think of ways to facilitate the production of good, watchable, uh, you know, music performance, music content, and... I thought this would be helpful, and so I found what's amazing about this is it allows you to live stream in 360, so I can connect this to my computer, and I can run direct audio into my computer, I can run 
this video feed into my computer, and so I could just have a really nice uh, presentation that's a 360 uh, shot that's live streamed from any of my events. I think that's pretty cool. And then it's up there on the ether to access for in perpetuity. Um, so I think that's great. And uh, not to mention you can use it for other purposes, but for me that's why I got it. And it's it's worked out. It does what I bought it for. And so, uh, but yeah, it ain't cheap. Um, so there's that. The TC Electronic Spark Mini Booster. I got this for my acoustic uh, pedal board. I just needed a boost uh, that was separate from the looping device, and this does the job. It works great. The The amount that it can boost is kind of insane. I keep the level turned way down low uh, and still get all the boost that I need. Um, but, yeah, it does, it, which is, I guess, on ultimately that's nice because you have a huge range of how much you can boost uh, using this device, so that's good, I guess. Uh, so it does what you need it to do. So recommended $64, I, I, a little more than I wanted to spend on a boost, but uh, it's good. All right, the wireless earbuds. So I guess these are kind of like, um, uh, what, the AirPods or something like that, but just uh, at 20, at, at 30 bucks, AirPods at 30 bucks. And the reason why I included this in, in a music-related uh, video is, well, they play music. I guess that's the most basic way. But when you're mixing, um, it's always good to listen through to things, listen to your your mixes through lots of different, you know, inputs. And so, this is a really cheap acquisition that you can get that I've found to be really useful. You can see the case that that they come in actually charges the headphones in addition to storing them. So I found these to be awesome. I love them. I use them all the time. I think they sound good. Um, I can use them for exercise. Put a little headband to hold them in. I can exercise, listen to to podcasts, or listen to music, listen to mixes. So if you ever wanted something like this, like the AirPods, they stay in your ears pretty good too, without even without a headband. But when you're running around, maybe you, you wear a headband. Um, but yeah, if you've ever wanted something like this, like one of the AirPods. I just think get these, they do the job for a fraction of the price. So I'm, I'm very, very happy with these. All right, we've got uh, the Senna 50S motorso Motorcycle Jog Dial Communication Bluetooth Headset with sound by Harman Kardon Integrators. I did a bunch of research. I started doing some cycling. I wanted to exercise, you know, keep myself in good physical health, uh, try to uh, better my energy levels for performances and uh, just overall be a better version of myself. And so I was exercising in different ways, and one of the things I wanted to do was was cycle. And I decided to cycle to the gym, uh, which was about a 30-minute drive for me. Um, and I wanted to make the most of that time that I'm just going to be on a bicycle. And so then I'm exercising, and while I'm exercising, I found that it's really easy to also focus your attention either on thinking or on learning. And so I listen to Mandarin uh, education podcasts so I can learn how to speak Mandarin. Uh, my wife is, is Chinese and her family lives in China. And so that way I'm trying to make sure I can communicate better with her and her family. And she speaks nearly flawless English. She speaks great English. But even so, it would be really helpful to learn Mandarin. This is kind of beside the point. But whatever purpose you might want to have learning for, I just wanted to put this on here to encourage anybody to cycle. Um, and that this, even though it is expensive, and along with the next item is the helmet that I bought, so we're looking at $400 to set this up. This has been really effective for me, and I think totally worth it. I think I easily got this value out of it. Because with the amount of time that I spend on a bicycle, I'm getting into better health. It's just good for me physically. It's good for me mentally. Um, and then all that time, I can't really be doing anything else. And so it makes it so much easier to just focus. You know, sometimes if you're sitting here, if I'm sitting here in my studio or you're sitting at home or in your office or something, it's like you could still do a whole bunch of other things. Whenever you have the internet at your fingertips, 
you could do anything. And um, it's very easy to get distracted. And so when you're on a bicycle, the options are a little more limited. And so I think for me, it makes it easier to focus. And I did a bunch of research into devices that you can put into helmets. And there weren't really a lot of good options that would do justice to the sound side of things. This does. This is, it's good enough, maybe even a little better than it needs to be. And and then the, the big uh, sort of perk on top of it is it can receive your calls. And so you can conduct calls and people may have no idea that you're on a bicycle. I mean, I've, I've found that to be true. People don't know that I'm on a bicycle. It's a, a perfectly fine call for them. And so if I have any calls come in, I don't miss them. And I can conduct those calls. I can conduct business while riding my bicycle. So I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, if I'm listening to a podcast, a call comes in. I can hear it. I can tap the side of the thing uh, to answer a call. Or I can just say answer. And then if I want to end the call, there's a button on the very... Yeah, I can't point to it. But on the back side of it, you can see it. It's visible there. It's that little bump that's coming out the back. Um, you can press that to end calls. So... Maybe not for everybody, but I, I maybe what I said can inspire you to to do it. I think it's been totally, totally worth it uh, to me just for the exercise and the learning. I've got so much value out of this thing. So, All right, and the helmet that I bought with it has worked out great. This is an awesome helmet for, for good value. Um, so, yeah, music a music helmet. All right, we got the Couchade pop-up canopy tent. I haven't used this much yet, but I anticipate that I, because I bought it a little bit later in the year, I guess. Um, I anticipate that I will use this a lot uh, as time goes on. And unfortunately, when I was putting it together, I ripped it a little bit. But uh, it's very, very small, and it'll still, it'll still function just fine. But I would say, if you get this when you put it together, just be a little bit careful. You, you, it needs to be pulled really tight to get it on, and... Uh, I think there was something in the way that I did, did it that caused it to rip. I, I forget exactly what it is. I just just be a little bit careful when you put it together. But once it's all together, it's great. It's uh, it looks great. The functionality is great. It comes in a case you can carry it in. Uh, so I'm excited to put this to use uh, and protect equipment because there was one gig last year where my stuff was melting. It was like on the verge of melting, and I just didn't feel comfortable at all um, with expensive gear being that hot in the sun. So this will help protect it as well as your own self. So, all right, let's move on to the next thing. We've got the Boss Octaver pedal, the OC5. I was really happy with this. I, I use this in my loop setup. Um, I, so if you're, if, you're, if you're doing looping, this is great to convert your guitar into a bass. It does a really good job. There's a lot of videos out there that cover this device, so I won't go into it, but I would just say if you know what the purpose of this device is, I think it's got to be one of the best devices on the market for this. So really happy with the sounds you get out of it. Um, and so I'm even tempted to use it now that I'm not looping anymore. I'm tempted to just use it in my studio so I don't have to get out of bass. Um, I'm going to see, see how that goes. But overall, I think... Uh, if you're looking for something like this, then this is probably the one to get. It's, it's really good. All right, more batteries. You've got, these are the batteries that go in uh, um, tuners. So I always find that I have a tuner that's dying and I don't have a battery. So I just went ahead and stocked up. So I have tuning batteries Everywhere, you know, in my guitar case, in my studio, inside, in my house, wherever I might end up needing a tuning battery, I've got one, and I'm not going to run out anytime soon. Good price. It's just better to buy these things on Amazon. You know, the batteries, it's better to buy them on Amazon, because if you buy them in a store, you're just paying like double or triple the price, so no reason not to just stock up at a really good rate. Really good rate. Hey, here's a cool thing that... Um, exists. Maybe you're not aware of this, but uh, I use this now with my solo acoustic setup. Since I'm using the TC Helicon Perform VG, or the, uh, the TC Electronic 
perform VG. I've got one out that previously I was running into a QSC stage monitor or QSC K12 as a stage monitor and then out of that into my mains. It was a little limiting and the the cha the uh, the channeling makes some sort of funny volume controls that you have to deal with uh, to get good levels. This solves that problem. So if you are, ha have something, some situation kind of like that, or you just want to be able to expand one XLR into many outputs, this does it perfect. It's awesome. It's going to last forever. Uh, so I I'm really happy to have it. It's a neat little, little tool that uh, is useful to me in a number of different situations. Uh, so pretty simple what it does. Uh, there's five outs, one in five outs. So if I've got one out for like simple setups that I do, even if I'm including, uh, my, my, uh, sometimes I'll, my drummer will, will join me for some small gigs. And this is really helpful to me in those uh, situations. So let's go on to this. Hey, you can't have, you can't be unhappy about a 25 foot long uh, outlet surge protector uh, power strip. Not a bad price on it. It's good quality. It lasts a long time. I've always been really happy to have one of these in my cable bag, just because you never know when that's useful. I've got a couple of uh, 50 foot uh, extension cables, extension cords. Um, that you need to have extension cords as a gigging musician. You got to have them in your car. You got to have them ready because you never know when you're going to need them. And it's just nice to have uh, another 25 feet available because you never know the setup situation that you're in. And to have it on the back of a power strip is, uh, I've found it to be really handy sometimes. So this is a good one, good option. Maybe not on, not the cheapest, but uh, I think it's good and, and, and uh, it's a, I think it's a fine value. For holding some devices, I think uh, it's gonna, it's hard to beat this the the price. If you're looking for a stand for your laptop, um, for a, I was holding my Boss 505 on this for a while. Um, it's reasonably sturdy, especially depending on what you attach it to. Um, it's good enough, you know. It's it's well, I would say it's even more than good enough. It's not as sturdy. It's not like rock solid sturdy, but it's sturdy to the point where it's not annoying. <laughs> so for 35 bucks um, to, to have something that's got two levels to it and you can put something on the bottom as well, then uh, that's a pretty dang good value. And uh, the assembly is, is fairly easy and so recommended. It's a useful uh, piece of equipment. There we go. Source one outdoor business card holder. I put these on my sign. So I've got a, a cool, you know, A frame sign. Oh, is that what it's called? And I just went ahead and I bought two of these so I could put them on one on either side. And that way I don't have to think about business cards. If, I, if I've got my sign with me, I've got business cards. And I don't have to get necessarily interrupted during a song for somebody to, to get a business card. So I just think this is a, it's a useful thing. Uh, it's smart, not that expensive. What is it, 13 bucks? I think that's, uh, that's worth it. And, and they work, they, they, they stick nice to your, to whatever you wanna stick it to and uh, not much else to that. All right. I've mentioned this one before. It's been on. It was on my list last year. The price has gone up. I bought these for forty bucks last year, uh, but uh, and I've I've bought these a couple times. The stands are great, but I would still say the value is good. You've got for for seventy bucks, three mic stands, and three twenty foot XLRs or eighteen foot XLRs. I think is what they are. Still a pretty pretty dang good value. Hard to beat that value. At 40 bucks, it was a ridiculous value, but uh, hard to beat that value. But I guess things keep coming out because those other cables I mentioned earlier, like six 50-footers at 20 bucks. That's insane. That's insane. All right. This 
Also, another item that you might not think of as a music purchase. But I found it to be really useful. I And it's not on the cheap side, although there's a nice discount right now. And then it's got a 15% coupon there in addition to it. So it's getting down there. I think I bought it for about 60 But uh, I've got this in my studio. I just think it's it's... It's a really nice, it's bold. It helps me value time more and just kind of be like, boom, it's, it, you know, it's happening and, you know, that I need to stay on it. So I think that's useful. But also, you can use it as a timer. You could use it as a workout timer. But for me, I have plans to use it as a open mic timer for people's sets so that people can clearly see how long their set is, how much more time is on their set, and then know when their time is up to try to keep things on a nice, efficient schedule. Um, so it's got a number of different uses. Maybe not the most music-related purchase here, but you can use it uh, for that. And for me as a musician, I'm really happy I have it. So, yeah, I'm, I, I wasn't sure when, before I bought it. I was like, ah, do you really just need a clock, like an expensive clock or expensive timer? Is that really worth it? But now that I have it, I'm really happy I, that I have it. So that is a win purchase. All right, here we've got the Boss FS7 foot switch. You know, it's a foot switch, so it does what foot switches do, but it's a really nice build quality. It feels like it's going to last a long, a long time, and uh, it functions really well. So it's a great foot switch. So if you need a foot switch, this is a good one. And the last one I already did, it's the Space Arc book. So I guess that's it for, for the purchase. There are other purchases that I've made along the way that are some some smaller ones uh, that I just thought not to include. Um, but I hope this was useful to you. If you found it interesting, let me know what what you thought was useful, maybe what wasn't. If you think there's ways that I can improve this video, let me know. Um, but that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.